Lena, what's going on? I'm here and I'm feeling happy and I'm so happy to have you. <laughs> Good, I'm happy to have you. So tell us a little bit about where you're from. Tell us about your background. Um, I grew up in Chicago. Okay. My dad was born there. Um, I lived there majority of my childhood. Mm-hmm. I my mom is Filipino. She lives in the Philippines. He met my mom in the Philippines, um, and they kind of like started a whole life. And through that life, they had me. Um, now I live in New York City. I work in entertainment, and um, just out here, like every inspiring artist, trying to relieve all this beautiful talent and tools that I have for this world. Yeah. How do you, how did you find your talent and tools? It actually kind of found me. How did I feel that like, happen? Um, my great grandmother, she was a dance teacher and a model, mm-hmm. and she had a dance studio. And as a young child, I was always around her house, dancing around her, her house, and she saw the talent, and she was like, you're gonna be my last student. I'm gonna put you in dance classes. <laughs> And um, it kind of just started there. I started off as a dancer, and then dancing brought me to New York City, and then dancing brought me to modeling. So Mm -hmm. I got into fashion, and um, that's kind of like where it started. What's your experience been like in fashion? My experience has been like in fashion. It's been kind of up and down, Mm -hmm. like most models of color mm-hmm. you're looking and always searching and wanting and yearning for an opportunity and majority of us have to create our own yeah. so I feel like fashion also kind of chose me um, it was something that I was just at the right place at the right time and it kind of happened and um, the blessings just start coming and through fashion I was allowed to do some amazing things when I first started um, and when I first very first started I started a little bit different mm-hmm. than what you see before you mm-hmm. I came to New York City when I was 17 and I came um, a little bit different different how? Huh? different in a sense <laughs> of I came as someone I came as <laughs> I came as a little young teenage boy Mm -hmm. and I came here and I started to do modeling because I looked a little different and people always said, oh, you have such a different look, you should do modeling. So at that time there was no, there was no, there was no model that was like me and no one was going to gamble with someone like me Mm -hmm. and um, it was perfect. I was happy that that didn't happen because that really wasn't who I was. I was someone much better and someone much more beautiful and um, you're happy that you didn't have the success at that time because you felt like you weren't your more most authentic I wasn't my most authentic and um, I had to do that to see because at that time society was saying in the fashion world you have to be one type of person you right. have to be a girl or a boy mm-hmm. you have to be you can't be anything else mm-hmm. and um, I wasn't fully a boy I was I was my gender was boy but physically mentally emotionally spiritually I was femininity the yeah. light of femininity yeah so um, I just wanted to make sure that I took a chance to see who I could be or what I could be and it didn't happen and that was a blessing because something much better was going to happen that's so a, that's a really really beautiful way to look at it. How, yeah. how did you get to the point where you said this isn't working for me? I'm not being my most most authentic self. How did you get to the point of wanting to come into your most authentic self? Um, the point when I decided I needed to take that next step to be authentic was it was just every opportunity that I was trying to go after and create. I was getting doors slammed in my face Mm -hmm. and because um, I was just I was just trying to be what society wanted me to be Mm -hmm. I wasn't living for myself Mm -hmm. and um, I just had to take a step back go back to my 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 home and my nest my family and 
really figure out who I am. And that's what a lot of people need to do is they need to stop what they're doing right. and stop pursuing on what society thinks. And right. they need to regroup and find the true magic inside. Um, and I found that magic. And Was that a frightening thing to do though? You know, you're pursuing this career, you're pushing hard to open doors for yourself, but then having to stop and say, okay, I can't do this right now. You know, was that frightening or was that empowering? It was frightening and empowering. It was a lot of different emotions. Mm -hmm. um, it was kind of in a sense of like, I can't really enjoy true happiness unless I find happiness in myself. Right. So it just, it kept, it, it just kept going. It, this repetitive of just like agencies saying no and people looking at me like, are you serious? Like, are you serious? Like you, mm. you were never work in this world. You were never work wow. in fashion. Like mm. you're too short. You're like too skinny. Like to be a model, to be a male model, mm -hmm. there's a certain aesthetic that we're looking for and right. you don't have that. Mm -hmm. And they were right. It wasn't at that time. Right now in fashion, maybe yes. There's definitely a moment. There's a moment for any any shape, any size, any color, any creed, every mm -hmm. range of humanity. Mm -hmm. There's a place for you in fashion entertainment, finally. Right. So um, I just, I, um, I went back to my roots, like I said, and I started, I started to love myself mm -hmm. and I started to see the person in front of me and I started to really, really just start educating myself. I started when I was very, very young also, but I really, as like a, a teenager, a young adult, I just really was like, um, the time is now. Because yeah. timing is the most important thing on earth. Because right. it's the only thing that you can't get back. Right. So I just started to just, it just happened. Yeah. It was just, just like, looking to yourself. it's just looking to myself and it just, it just happened. And your parents gave you that room and that space to explore and grow and, and be the person you wanted to be. What was it like having the support of your parents or did you have the support of your parents immediately? Um, you know, how did you have that conversation with them? The conversation started very, very young because my mom originally first saw it. She first felt it and she Before knew, you before, were even aware? Before even I was, before I even knew what gender was. Okay. Um, my mom saw it at a very young age. She's like, this little, this little baby is special. Something's gonna, she's gonna have a very different life yeah. than everyone else. And mm -hmm. she told my dad, my dad was a little bit in denial about it, but over time, he came to understand it and it wasn't something that we needed to talk about it was something that he knew okay. it wasn't i want to ask you this and that's one thing that i tell people or people or parents that have questions about their child's sexuality never ask are you just say no and it's mm -hmm. fine so okay. i just i we never had that conversation he just kind of <laughs> myself. He, he set down the ground rules yeah to say the way the reason you're special mm -hmm. and because you're special society is going to want to hurt you because mm. you are so special mm. so be prepared for the criticism the hate the bullies the name calling mm. and i just that that made me very powerful at that time because right. i knew from that time on that it was a battle it was going to I be like, a battle. I like that you say your parents told you you were special and not different or weird right. or, you know, special. Yes. Like, your own person. Yes. You are unique. Exactly. You know, one of a kind. Exactly. I think that's, um, the language is so important mm -hmm. that we use to describe one another and that we use to communicate with mm -hmm. one another. Um, I was doing some research and I found, you know, the rates for suicide attempts are very high in the trans community and then even higher for those who don't have the support of their parents and right. I just want to talk about that a little bit. Um, do you know other people who may not have had that level of support that you had? So many. Yeah. And what and what Tons. is the effect on them? Um, they're fighting themselves. They're hurting themselves. They're even killing themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, support is something very, very important. Mm -hmm. You know, um, even not just with family, but having people to talk to, mm -hmm. you know, in school or in your community or just in your age group or whatever, you need to let it out. 
and a lot of people keep it so bottled up in and they they try to be themselves around their family and their family doesn't really understand it because people don't people know what's going on but people are not talking about it right and right now in the world people are talking about it mm -hmm. like i said before in other interviews it's a conversation that matters it's a conversation that people should be having it's something that um has it's, it's something that is in every community around the world and people need to understand this and how important this is that being different or being trans or being gay or just the fiber of being different yeah is nothing new yeah you know everything that you do in life started with someone that went out in the world and said i'm going to create something whether it's with myself or a tool for society they stood up and they went out there and that's why we are living in this world of so many possibilities and options right so you have to look in yourself and find that difference and yeah. be free with it and don't be afraid of it because right now in the world you can be who you are right i think it's it's uh, it's almost funny um Everybody wants freedom. Yes. Everybody wants to be free. As humans, we all say we want freedom. We all want to be free. And yet we continue to put ourselves and others into boxes. Mm -hmm. um, we love to categorize, whether it be by race or gender or sexuality, whatever the case may be. It's like we love to put people in boxes. And by doing that, we're not allowing them to be special. Right. We're not allowing them to be free. And we're taking away our own freedom right. at the same time because we feel like we have to fit into these boxes mm -hmm. and you know maybe deny ourselves a part of who we are so that we can fit into a certain category or please someone else. Mm -hmm. um, I want to talk about, so your mom is from the Philippines. My mom's Philippines. Philippines is really Catholic. It is. It's super Catholic. Um, that religion kind of scares me a little bit. Why does it scare you? Um, <laughs> because it, like so many religions, there's so many rules mm -hmm. on how to live, mm -hmm. on what you should live like, in so many, like you said, boxes. Um, and I feel like religion kind of destroys us. My mom was Catholic, my dad was Christian, and I was caught in the middle, so I didn't know where to go. Mm -hmm. And I was abused by religion, mm -hmm. mentally. Also. I was abused because especially I was raised by my father and he raised me in a black church mm -hmm. Christian black church my great-grandmother black church everyone in my family in order to succeed in life in order to be free in order to be anything the Bible mm -hmm. it always comes back to the Bible it's always everything in life always come back to the Bible mm -hmm. and that that strength and that pressure can really diminish everything about you right. because it's something that we're looking for freedom we're looking for a way to have a have an idea and express our ideas but it's always like well you can't do that because the bible said you can't do it right you know what i mean and um the catholic church in the philippines is my mom she always was like she always brings back to their whole religious thing and i just kind of like say i don't want to hear it yeah. you know because but i don't she still try she to does she doesn't it. she doesn't do it in a way that is kind of like abusive mm -hmm. but she always comes back to it in some form of way mm -hmm. and she understands that my religious beliefs is quite different from everyone else's and um i don't want to be put in a box what do you believe i believe in humanity i believe in ideas i believe in possibilities i believe in everything i can see touch feel and dream mm -hmm. that's what I believe in mm -hmm. you know I believe in being good and having great karma and um, I believe in that mm -hmm. you know what I mean I believe that um, all these amazing religions kind of in some way have the same thing in a sense but we're they're all boxed up right so I just feel like if you're looking for a God if you're looking for a higher being, then look in yourself, because mm -hmm. that's where you're. That's where it. That's where it's at. That's mm -hmm. where. That's what people should be looking. Mm -hmm. Listen to yourself. Yeah. Listen to your conscience. Listen to your heart, and you will have answers. Mm -hmm. Do you find that growing up in a religious household, or you know, two religious households, um, 
had an effect on your ability to be authentic, especially, you know, being Catholic, being Christian. I know in the black church, there's a lot of homophobia, oh, there's yes. a lot of fear. Mm -hmm. um, how did that affect you? Um, well, f from the beginning, the black church s said no to me. Yeah. No, we're not having it. Mm. We're, it's not accepted. Mm -hmm. So I, at a young child, as a young, young, just, I just, I didn't, I refused, I rebelled against anything that had to do with religion. I didn't want to do it. I was, it was not, I had a, um, I mean, some, would, would they confront you? Would they say things to your parents? The energy. The energy. The energy was, mm -hmm. it was in welcoming. And I don't want to go where I'm not welcome. Did they have conversations with your dad? I mean, um, you they have com Yes, they did. My family had conversations. Mm. You can't wear this. You can't look like this. This is how you have supposed to look. Let's go buy you clothes mm. if you don't have that. You know what I mean? I was not going to do it. Mm. I was not having it. I was not going to be for it. And I will be rebe if I did have to go, then I would be there bored or like I said, I have tantrums. So mm. I just. I, I, I didn't take it serious, and I know some, a lot of you out here take religion so serious, but um, I just knew that for me to succeed and have a positive life, I didn't need the Bible for it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Obviously, the Bible has certain contexts that people are looking for in these short stories about life to look for what to do and what not to do, but um, I feel like that's all it is. It's just mm -hmm. a bunch of stories that you can have their lessons to be learned. and. Right. Um, that's what every religion is, you know, David and Goliath, Adam and Eve, this is what they did. If you do this, this is going to happen. And blase, blase, blase. And one thing that I took, took away from religion is with Jesus, he didn't take, he didn't say no to anyone. Everyone mm -hmm. was welcomed. Right. And people that are so celebrating religion, they're so, where are you getting these facts from of like, Jesus is this and Jesus said that. Jesus welcomed everyone. Mm -hmm. So why... Are you, pe I don't know, Why are where, you where, was the, where was the loss? Where, where did you miss that at? You know what I mean? Right. It was about bringing everyone together and mm -hmm. people want to use religion to separate us. And that's mm -hmm. what I don't like. Yeah. Because, um, <laughs> because homophobia and transphobia is so prevalent in the black community, do you feel like with your activism, sometimes you have to choose between advocating for racial justice and advocating for trans rights? Both of those, um, trans and race, is two separate things. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm black first. Okay. And I am trans second. Okay. Um, and I am a black woman that is trans. Mm -hmm. And to some degree, that is at the bottom of the food chain. Mm -hmm. So... Mm -hmm. I've definitely been affected by both mm -hmm. in fashion and in my career and every opportunity mm -hmm. that has definitely come come up. Um, but is it going to steer me down? No, it's going to make me work harder. Mm -hmm. So um, those two spectrums, spectrums are very, very important um, because right now that is what the world is talking about. So obviously I'm dealing with it on a day-to-day -day basis emotionally, mm -hmm. but I live in a world where I've created my own opportunities and I've created a voice for me to just stand up against that. And I want other people, people of color and trans and anyone that feels that they're different to stand up and be who you want to be, regardless what people say. You can create, you can live, you can dream and all that can come true. Mm -hmm. You just have to believe in yourself. So I won't let it hold against me and it's never going to. Absolutely. It's actually my power. Yes. You get your power. From <laughs> I get my power, girl. Being special. Being, exactly. Being exactly who you were meant to be exactly. and expressing that most authentically <laughs> as you can. Yes. You know? Um, so, how do you... I want to switch gears a little bit and just talk about your day-to-day -day life, you know? What is it like for you? How do you experience well how do you have you ever been attacked or have you ever experienced violence or any type of you know things like that 
I have in some ways. Mm -hmm. um, Whether it be verbal, physical, you know. Whatever. Yeah, mostly verbal. Mm -hmm. um, mostly when I was a child growing up, um, I remember um, I was raised on the south side of Chicago and going to the playgrounds, being fair skinned, light skinned, and being just mixed race and being a little, just a little more feminine. Than major most than boys are. Mm -hmm. Yes, I've dealt with like sissy fag. I'm gonna beat your ass and da 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 da. But um, I that's just came with that's came with it. Every child is teased. Mm -hmm. You know, regardless how imperfect or imperfect you are, you're dealing with being teased and being policed by anyone. Um, have the police uh, have have I been affected by police? Yes, in a sense, not directly towards me, but mm -hmm. in my community and my I was my dad was a black my dad is a black man. I have, right. have two black brothers, right. and my brother has dealt with it. Mm -hmm. So I, at hand, I haven't, but me seeing that happen to him, it has affected me. Right, um, and anyone that is being bullied or police, I'm affected by because I'm all about fighting back. I'm all about the movement, the Black mm -hmm. Panther movement. And just saying no, it's not happening. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Standing yeah. up for yourself. I'm all about that. Um, directly towards me, no. But if I ever see it in my face, someone being bullied because they are different, I'm going to stand up. Mm -hmm. And Where I do you get that. Where do you get that courage? It's it's in my blood. Yeah. The first time I was called a nigger, I was in sixth grade. Mm -hmm. I went to an all white school on the south mm -hmm. side. Well, actually. At that time, I moved to the suburbs. It was mm -hmm. all white. There were no black teachers. I was the only biracial child in the school. There was probably like maybe a handful of black students. And my best friend was the first person that called me a nigger. Wow. Yes. How did that happen? And, um, <laughs> <laughs> I was in the rest, I was in the restroom. Yeah. The male restroom at the time. Okay. And um, we were just talking, like two best friends talk. He was white. Um, and we, you know how like in school, you go to the roller rink and people, you know, they have like different, like all girls on the floor, all boys on the floor. And then mm -hmm. they say couples on the floor. Mm -hmm. And he asked me, who are you going to ask on the floor to skate with mm -hmm. as a couple? And I told him her name was Elena Hayes. She was mm -hmm. my best friend. Um, and that name sounds familiar, Elena. <laughs> um, and I said, I'm going to ask Elena to on the floor. And he said, why would she want to skate with a nigger? Yes. Wow. I was I was more so in shock because it was my best friend. Right. And it's just like you're my best friend. And I thought to myself, you don't know better. Mm. And I, I of course I told the teacher and he was punished and he apologized about it. But you know, I didn't I I, I was kind of like, this is not truly him because this is my best friend. This is probably his parents. So you didn't become angry in that moment. I was kind of like, I was shocked. I was like, what? Whoa. Mm -hmm. Me? Mm -hmm. Like, I've read about this. I've heard about this. I was educated on this word nigger and now it's happening to me. Right. So I was kind of like in shock and we still became, we were, we're never best friends again, but we were still, so we were, we were still cordial, but I didn't hold it against him because it's not his fault. He was a young child, just like I was. He right. was taught that way. Mm -hmm. This disease called hate that people are raised in this world, mostly in the South. Mm -hmm. It's disgusting. We're and not born. We're not born that. It's a, it's something that people teach are us. Taught. We're taught mm -hmm. that, and it's a, it's a disgusting disease. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'm 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 all about. What is what is the cure? The cure. <sighs> Now that is a question. <laughs> now that is a question. What is the cure to this word called hate? To this disease. This disease. <laughs> um, I don't have the answers. I mean, I for think that. You, I mean, how, I think you do it every day. Yeah, I mean, I think I think it's in your actions yes. every single day, in your intentions, in your day-to-day -day interactions with people. I think even just by being authentic and living your truth, you are getting rid of hate because mm -hmm. people might have ideas oh, yes. in their mind of what it's like to meet someone who's trans, to meet even a black person, because some people have never even met a black oh, person yeah. or sat down and had tea or, or you know had one. a conversa or dated one or had a conversation. And so by you being you and showing them like 
I'm being myself and right. I'm not the evil person you think I am. Right. I'm not, you know, the the stereotypes, the negative stereotypes that you have in your mind. I'm not that. Right. And so just by being you, I think you're, you know, getting rid, you're curing that hate. Right. I think you're right. I think that those people out there, people like you, people like me, we're a living testimony um, for today and tomorrow. What is the cure? Yeah. And um, we just have to keep going, keep mm -hmm. pushing the walls down, keep knocking them down and um, bringing awareness and talking about this and um, sharing all this with the world so people can look in the mirror and say, my time is now. Mm -hmm. So. What do you see for the future? What is... You know, what does the future look like to you in your ideal world? In my ideal world, the future will have possibilities for every person. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a hard battle. It might not happen in my lifetime, but hopefully in the generations to come, it will be a world full of harmony and peace and freedom yeah true freedom mm -hmm. not just the word freedom real true mm -hmm. freedom um, this this the, you know just like 40 years ago there was still racism there was still blacks only whites only no <coughs> still racism it's still racism but, but, it, but it was it was so Overt. it was yeah. yeah and it's now it's coming out more and more and more mm -hmm. so um it's never went away it's been high it's been hiding but it's still here and hopefully in the future you know everyone can just throw it all out there it's get it all out everyone. yeah it's a place for everyone but we need to get it out we need to get it off our chests you know people you, need to talk about do you it. feel like now though because like you know i was upset by the results of this election. I was upset by Donald Trump being elected into office. However, like you're saying, I do feel that people are now able to say how they feel. And so we can address the issues. You know, people aren't concealing it anymore, mm -hmm. which, you know, can be a threat. It can be dangerous. Oh, yes. We've seen, you know, the rise in oh, domestic yes. terror mm -hmm. and um, things like that. But now, do you feel like there's room for a dialogue? There's room to address why people feel that way and, and get rid of those hateful feelings. Yeah, I definitely, I want those people to come out. Yeah. I want, I want the truth to be, I want the truth to be out. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Whatever you feel, whether, I, people, all these bigots and racists and people that have been hiding for so long. Thank you for coming out so people can still can really see what the fuck is going on. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? My ex-boyfriend, he first told me that racism is no more. I'm like, how can you say this? Mm -hmm. Like, and now I sit and talk to him about it and he has nothing to say because now he can see it. And people need to see that. Like I said, 40 years ago, through, you know, it was... It was it was obviously out and stuff like that and now it's slowed down in the last like few years but it's now out and those people that don't really know about it you know there's people that know that racism is alive and there's people that don't think racism but there's people that don't don't, don't know which side to choose and th those people who believe that racism doesn't exist anymore anymore no, or can be just as harmful yes. as those who are racist of course because they won't fight because they feel like there's no issue right that's this that's the sad part yeah that's really really the sad part um we need to definitely we need they need to be educated mm -hmm. um i i i don't really have any i don't know what to say about that you know it's it's a very it's very very sad that how does that education happen how do you get them to become aware through leaders mm -hmm. like me and you you mm -hmm. know getting out and they're not some people they they, they can deny it mm -hmm. but it's going to come up well there's no hiding from it now yeah you know what i mean every channel you turn to it it's in your face you know you want to mm -hmm. watch and it's on every channel you know what i mean it's in our cartoons Mm -hmm. It's in, it's, it's no hiding from it, you know, um, and it's, it's just really, really sad that there are people that don't really want to include everyone else. They want to stay just selfish. Mm -hmm. So 
um, it's, you know, just keep fighting, mm -hmm. keep going hard, and keep being, living, you know, out loud, mm -hmm. as I say, live out loud. And That's the, let them that, suffer. Is that the one? <laughs> <laughs> let them suffer. Let them suffer. <laughs> Is that like the one piece of like essential advice that you would give is like live out loud? Live out loud, please. Mm -hmm. I'm asking everyone, I dare everyone to just live in your most beautiful form. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? What makes be you on the train happy? and be in wear what you want to wear right. and date who you want to date. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think that's, you know, I think that's why that's the root of why people are so unhappy mm -hmm. is because we're trying to be something that we're not, you know, these expectations, but it's like when you really get in touch with yourself, mm -hmm. you can sense it's, it's an uncomfortable feeling when you're not being authentic. When you walk into a room and mm -hmm. you feel like you have to put on, you feel it, mm -hmm. you know, and, and people you can feel, feel it too. in your gut. Exactly. Other people can sense it, especially in this industry yes. where it's like you have to be extremely comfortable. Exactly. You have to own it. There's a moment when you just have to look yourself in the mirror and decide what makes you happy, what makes you you. Right. And then you have to just do it and unapolog people, unapologetically. And people that are out here that are being racist, bigots, homophobic, transphobic, they are, I feel like this is, this is what I think about it. I think mm -hmm. that you're being this way because you know deep down inside this is who you are. I really feel like when you hate someone for something, you're, it's because they're being themselves and you mm -hmm. can't be yourselves. And right. when you hate... So even if they're not necessarily gay or trans or whatever, they're just not being themselves. Exactly. And, it and them mad. mad. I love that. <laughs> I love that. It that makes is. complete sense. Yes. It's like, what are you doing being so free? Yes. But I feel like I can't be who I am. Yeah. And they That's hate incredible. you. Yeah. And they hate you because you're free and exactly. you're living. And they can't live their truth. And they're hating themselves at the mm. end of the day. They're hating themselves at the side. Because really? at the end of the day, we're all the same make yeah. and model. Cut right. my blood, it's going to blood same red, color. same color. Yeah. Sleeps, I sleep, I eat, I love. Right. You know, it's we're all the same. Right. So it's just it's just like when you're hating me, you're hating yourself. Right. You know what I mean? Just a reflection. Because you don't even know me, but if we sat down and have a conversation, we are gonna share some values and some ideas the same. Exactly. And that's where people are afraid of. They're afraid that I am just like this person and I can't be free and oh my god, like mm -hmm. maybe it's my time. And that's how you start with it. That's where you start the true love. That's beautiful. So I, I, I definitely, like I said, I dare people to get out and to meet people that are not the same as them. Right. Different color, different right. race. And it's Even not it, just, oh, I have a black friend. Oh, yeah, I work no. with an Asian. It's sit down, have some food, yes. invite them to your house, exactly. go to their house. Exactly. And even if they don't even speak the same language, you know, just we all, the more people that you connect with, that's how you grow as a human. Right. You know, learn a new language, meet people that you wouldn't normally meet, you know, do things, go places where you've never been, get a passport and travel so you can really see the world and you can see how beautiful it is. Because when you do stuff like that, you're growing. Right. And people are seeing that and they want to be a part of that. Yeah. You know, people are watching you everywhere. And, you know, I think that... Um, if people people are stuck in boxes now they're stuck in communities like people that grew up in high school they're all in this, they did the same thing their families doing. right it's a continual thing left. right you know i knew at a very young child that i needed to get out in the world and i yeah. wanted to see the world and i'm not going to be stuck so that's where it starts at yeah you know i just want everyone that is dealing with something you know that they're that it scares them mm -hmm. find someone to talk to get out no matter what it is a librarian um someone that works at a gym you know sit down and talk with someone the more you talk about it the more answers you're going to get for yourself to live in your true self beautiful so, awesome yeah. thank you thank you <laughs> thank you <laughs> my baby <laughs> work <laughs>